Uh, Jose Suleiman, I think, just had his 80th birthday. And uh, uh, there are different commissions in boxing. And the one, the only one that we've worked with has been the World Boxing Council. And that was, and he was out of Mexico, and there was a close tie between him and UCLA through what was called the SPAR program. And it was trying to figure out uh, through the orthopedic program and how to redesign gloves to protect uh, hands and um, bones and uh, those types of things. And uh, so what we did is we went in and I gave uh, several lectures along with Don Becker and a couple of other people on clinically how you recognize the concussion, what are the, what are the attributes, and how could you reduce the level of severe or repeat concussions in boxing. And uh, things like um, weigh-ins, so people would you know, starve themselves to weigh in for a fight in order to make a particular category. Well, they would, they would do that 24 hours before the fight. And we said, you know, you do that, you're, you're, creating a, you're, you're setting yourself up for a problem. You know, do the weigh-in earlier. Increase the weight of the boxing gloves from 14 ounces to 16 to maybe 18 ounces. Take the thumb of the boxing glove and stitch it down so it doesn't do it. Have the boxing glove go all the way up to the uh, forearm so it's a little heavier. Have the referee be able to call a fight much sooner before you have a technical knockout. And then after somebody has a technical knockout or they think they've, they've fought in a ring and they've got their bell rung, how many times do those blows to the head actually produce a concussion? We used to think that every blow did, but it doesn't. It's very, very few. And then how long should they not fight again? And the, the biggest problem was to keep these fighters uh, out from sparring. It wasn't the fact of their next bout for a, a, a title excuse me, a title fight, but it was when they were going to spar next. And we had to tell them, no, you have to stop, you cannot spar for X number of weeks. So and that trickled on over to the National Football League, and then it trickled over to the uh, National Hockey League. And then there was a big, big uh, story that came out, people were worried about heading the soccer ball, producing the concussion. And we had to have a panel uh, in Washington, D.C., and we developed a white paper saying, you know, I'm sorry, it's just, you, it, that does not cause concussion. Heading the ball does not do that. Head to head, or head to ground, or head to goalpost does, but not head to head, not to head ball. If you get hit 50 times, and each time you get hit, your brain uh, goes into a state of a, of a cerebral concussion or a mild traumatic brain injury, you have the devastating outcomes. But you have to have the symptoms the, the, and the physiology of concussion to be actually to do that. It's like the, the data that was acquired in boxing many years ago. Every blow to the head, although they can be glancing and they may look violent, um, uh, they, don't, they don't produce a concussion. There's about 10% of the blows in a boxing match can have the capability of producing a concussion. And most of those are, were occurring in the 15th and 14th and 13th round. Uh, that's why in the World Boxing Council we, we had them stop at 12 so they don't fight any more than 12 rounds.